I'm Amy from Doodle Dog Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make a three-dimensional hooked rug figure that can stand on its own. Let's get started. When you choose a project that you want to put a flat bottom on to make it freestanding, be sure to choose one that has a straight part on the bottom. You don't want something that's rounded or wavy or curved. You want just a flat bottom and that will allow you to attach a piece of fabric on the bottom that's flat to make it stand on its own. I finished hooking this bunny and I steam pressed it and now I'm ready to make it into a freestanding bunny. So the first step is to stay stitch all around the edge of the hooking as close to the hooking as you can get. And a stay stitch is just a straight stitch with the sewing machine and its purpose is to keep the fabric from stretching so it will help keep the bunny in the shape of a bunny or whatever shape you're doing so it doesn't become distorted. I did my stay stitching by using the zipper foot on my sewing machine and you can see it on the back. It's just a single row of stitching all the way around. The next step is to trim the excess foundation fabric away. I'm using monk's cloth because I think it's easier to use monk's cloth when making a shape design like this. And I'm just going to trim around, all the way around the bunny, and just leave a, a small seam allowance, about an inch. Then I'm going to take my serger and serge all the way around. If you don't have a serger, you could use a zigzag stitch all the way around. And that will keep the edges from unraveling. So you can see that I surged all the way around the edge of the monk's cloth. So I'm going to press the edges under. But when you press the edges under in the inside corners, it's easier to do if they're clipped. So I'm going to clip all of the inside corners, snip right up close to the stay stitching, but not through it. Just do that on all of your inside corners. Now if I were to leave this like this, the monk's cloth would unravel. So I'm going to use some Alien Stop Fraying, it's sometimes called Fray Check. And I put it on top of a piece of wax paper. Follow the instructions on the label. But you just want to rub it all over the seam. It keeps the woven fabrics from unraveling. After you get all of the cut edges treated, you just want to set it aside and let it dry. I usually leave it alone overnight. The fray check has been allowed to dry and now I'm going to turn the unhooked foundation fabric to the back of the project. And I'm going to baste it down with a needle and thread as I go. This will help keep it secure and in place while the back is sewn on. I have the basting completed and I'm going to use a felted wool for the back and bottom of the bunny. I like to use felted wool because it doesn't unravel. Just place the hooked rug on top of your felted wool and then you're going to cut around the felted wool. You want your scissors at a little bit of an angle out so that it will make a slightly bigger piece of felted wool than the hooked rug is. Now because I want this bunny to have a flat bottom so it can stand up, I'm going to sew all the way around the top and both sides and leave the bottom open for now. So I'm going to pin it together along the sides and the top. And you want to choose a thread that will blend in fairly well with the 
backing fabric. So start at one of the bottom corners and bring the thread up underneath the folded edge of the foundation fabric. And then as you stitch around, you want to catch the folded over edge of the foundation fabric and the edge of the wool. And do a whip stitch and you want to do that stitches fairly close together so you don't have big gaps in the wool on the back when you get to places where like this where there's a fold in the foundation fabric just be sure you get that tucked in good when you whip stitch. You don't want to see any of that on the back side of the project when you get done. I now have the bunny all sewn up on the sides and around the top and I've left the bottom open and I'm going to stuff the bunny now with some fiber film and I'm going to stuff it to about half an inch from the bottom. After it's stuffed like that, you can see that the bottom forms an oval. So I want to cut a piece of felted wool in this size of an oval. So you can place the figure on a piece of tracing paper or tissue paper and trace around it. And that will give you an idea of the size of the oval that you're going to need. And then you can straighten that out and make it a nice looking oval shape. Once you have a nice oval shape drawn, you can take that and cut it out of felted wool. I'm going to use the same felted wool I used on the back of the bunny. It's better to make the oval a little bit too large rather than too small because you can always trim it down as you sew it on if needed. After you cut your oval, it's a good idea to place it on there and see if it looks like it's going to fit. And as I said before, it's better to have it a little too big than a little too small. So in order to make the figure stand up and not fall over, you need to add a little bit of weight to the bottom. And you could just pour some stuffing pellets or kitty litter or something like that in the bottom. With the hook drug figures, I think it's easier to make a little flat sack to go in the bottom here. So I'm going to use this as my cutting template for a piece of muslin and I'm going to cut out two pieces of muslin in this same size. This will ensure that my weighted bag that I'm going to put in the bottom of the figure is just going to be slightly smaller than the bottom of the figure. So now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and use a quarter inch seam to sew all the way around leaving an opening for filling it. You could turn this bag if you want. I'm not going to worry about it since it's going to be inside my hook drag figure. And I'm going to use stuffing pellets. They're just little plastic beads that give a little bit of weight to the project. You could also use kitty litter or crushed walnut shells or something like that. I have a funnel that I use for this kind of a project. So I'm going to stick the funnel in the opening that I left and just pour them into the sack. And when the sack is full, I will finish sewing the opening closed. So now that the bag is complete, I can put it in here. And it looks like it could stand just a little bit more stuffing first. So I'll go ahead and finish filling it with stuffing. And then the bag. And then I'm going to place the bottom on it and I will stitch that in the same way that I stitched the sides and the top. I'm just going to whip stitch it onto the bottom of the figure. I like to start on one end or the other and that way when I get back to the end, if it's too long, I can cut it off. So I'm going to start right in here and I'll just bring my needle and thread up underneath the empty foundation fabric again and then I'll just start stitching it together. This is a little bit of a juggling act to hold everything together 
but it's not too hard. When you get around to the sewing where you have wool backing against the wool bottom, you can just continue just whip stitching the edge closed. And it looks like my size is pretty good, but if I could see that it was too big, this would be the point where I could use my scissors and trim it down so that it would fit properly. When you get back around almost where you started, you can add more stuffing at this point if you need to and you can test it and make sure it's going to be able to sit upright. This bunny is going to sit just fine with that amount of stuffing pellets, but I think I'm going to add just a little bit more stuffing underneath the bag of pellets. I added more stuffing here to help fill that part out and then I'm going to finish sewing it closed. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe below. I'll see you next time. Bye.